Hi there, everyone. Come on in and join us here at the Kumo Theater. Okay, so uh, let's talk, Randy, about what it is that you're going to be presenting today. What are we going to be talking about? So we're going to be talking about the future of network security and something specifically called the Software Defined Perimeter. Why is security the most important thing? I mean, it seems like companies can be, you know, you can make or break a company with security lately, right? No, I think when people are looking at moving to platforms like Amazon, one of their biggest concerns is, can I secure the environment? And I think there's great innovation in public cloud, accelerates innovation across the entire industry. If we can secure, it gives innovation for the entire industry to create and build new applications. Good stuff. All right. Well, come on in, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a moment. I'm taking no questions. I understand you'll be taking no questions from the stage left area. <laughs> Specifically in the this section right here. This could be a really fun <laughs> presentation because we have hecklers. So yeah. if anyone wants to come join us here at the Kumo Theater, we're getting started in just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please join us at the Kumo Theater if you'd like. We've got Randy Rowland from Six Terra taking the stage. Plenty of seats here, and if you want to bring your coffee, you're more than welcome to. Come on in and take a load off and get some great information. All right, I'm going to need my small but mighty crowd to give a very rock star loud, translation loud, welcome. This is Randy Rowland. All right, well, my name is Randy Rowland. I'm the uh, Chief Product Officer of Sixterra, and we're going to talk a little bit about the future of network security and specifically around uh, cloud computing. So if you, I've been coming to this show for several years. It continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and so that obviously is an indication that things are changing in our industry. If you think about how much IT has changed in the last few years, it's, it's amazing. And I think one of the major reasons uh, that we see so much attention here is that companies are no longer investing in their internal data centers. In fact, um, analysts say by next year, two-thirds of all IT assets are going to reside externally. So they're going to be in third-party data centers. They're going to be in public clouds like Amazon. Um, and we think this is just the beginning, right? If, if you move forward, uh, companies are no longer investing in internal data centers, which means we're naturally in a hybrid IT environment, and that's our, our go forward state. Um, but one of the most fascinating things about this is that most companies are still using a perimeter-based network security model, right? And the cloud has completely changed that. It's amazing to me how many companies are still using firewall, VPN, and NAC to protect their internal networks, and that is their primary defense. And this has to change, right? If um, people that are trying to steal data from companies no longer look at a firewall as an impediment. All they want to do is get on the inside of the network and look around until they find something valuable. So we have a great um, need for us to revolution and eradicate the perimeter-based solutions that nearly every company uses to protect their network. As long as we have internal flat networks, we're going to continue to see breaches in the news. And so in, this is what we're going to talk about in the rest of the discussion, is how can we make this change over time? So Amazon actually has innovated enormous amounts of new uh, ideas and technologies. Um, and one of them that's the most impressive to me is actually the security group. When you deploy a new workload in AWS, it doesn't sit behind a large monolithic firewall like it does in a corporate data center. That doesn't even exist. Network access is controlled on an instance, uh, to in instance by instance basis through a security group. Effectively, if you think about it, what they've done is created a dynamic distributed firewall 
that's distributed across every instance that sits within Amazon. So this whole concept of a centralized single device where all traffic goes through has been eradicated in Amazon. I think this is a genius idea. It's, it's truly revolutionary and it's a path forward for all of us. We have to take this distributed network architecture, distributed network security and move it forward. Security groups are superior to traditional centralized firewalls and I believe that idea is starting to gain a lot of steam in eating the firewall industry itself. The more people get used to this distributed approach to network security, the less they're going to rely on a traditional perimeter defense to secure their, their information systems. And now we're starting to see many of the other cloud service providers are following suit with their own version of security groups. We're seeing distributed firewall vendors where they're going after pushing the network security into the fabric itself and no longer relying on purpose-built perimeter devices. So today, security groups within AWS are focused on controlling network access between instances. That's what its primary function is. What if we could take that same distributed security idea and push it all the way to the end user and the device they use to connect with? That's the big uh, idea, and that's effectively what we've built with AppGate. AppGate is a network access platform that can create a dynamic one-to-one -one network segment from every user device to the network resource they attach to. It's a revolutionary idea. It's taking this distributed security like it's in uh, security groups in Amazon and extending that all the way to include the user and their device. We also have the ability to take that same security group construct and apply it to the user device itself through something we call ring fencing. So not only can we um, extend that security group construct to the device, now we can actually control the local device and tell it what ports it can listen to. So we've actually created a full air gap network. Um, so that's what AppGate does. Whoops, I was supposed to build these slides. Um, so how do we do this? Um, our technology is based on a, a new principle called software defined perimeter. Um, and it has three primary design goals behind it. The first one is you want to create a network around each individual user. Historically, networks have been designed the back end network and the application. What we want to understand is what does every user actually need to do their job every day? And let's create a custom network for that individual user. So we look at a lot of things. We look at permissions from an application perspective. Does this user even have access or should access a system? We need to know about the device that's that they're using to connect. We need to know where they're connecting from in, in the world. So we want to design the network and center the user in the center of it. The second major, major principle is this concept of zero trust. It's, a, it's something that's pretty common in our industry. But the idea is, if you look at a traditional network, when a user goes into their office and sits down at their machine, they're given an IP address. At that point, they already have network access to everything internally. Then they authenticate to the application and start to do their job. We flip that um, on its head and we do it the opposite. We don't give any network access until we know you should connect. And then when we make that connection, we create a dynamic one-to-one -one firewall rule, what we call the segment of one, that only allows you to see that one network resource. Even if that network resource is on a larger back-end network, the only thing the user can get access to is that one uh, segment. Um, and so uh, effectively, everything else is completely invisible. The user only gets the authorized network resource, and when it's connected, it's got a dynamic segment of one. And the third major principle is we wanted to build this for the future. We wanted to build it like cloud and for cloud. And what do I mean by that? Um, we want to use cloud-based principles in the software design, and we'll talk about it in a minute. But this entire platform is an overlay. It's completely distributed and stateless. It's, um, it actually can scale as big as the cloud itself, based on the way that we've designed it. And the second major uh, thing we focus on is we want it to be pro programmable. Right? Historically, networks are all about rule sets, firewall rule sets. We feel like rule sets are last year's model. That's, that's the dying breed. The future is called live entitlements. 
I need to know in real time what my users should access and only use that. Uh, and it needs to be a living, breathing uh, system that's connected to the business, to the operational systems, to the business systems, and create this live entitlement. So we believe live entitlements will replace firewall rule sets as a, as a primary idea. And Gartner agrees with us. They, they, VPNs are actually not even a security technology, they're remote access technology. They're predicting that most enterprises are gonna move to a software-defined perimeter solution in the next few years and start to phase out the traditional perimeter-based technologies. So how does AppGate work? It's got three main components. as a controller, a client, and a gateway. So this is how the software works. Using a technology called single packet authorization, which we can talk about later, a customer or a client who wants to access a resource makes a request to the controller. The controller looks at the access criteria needed, and if it's met, will download an entitlement back to the client. In that entitlement is the actual resource I can connect to, and I can take it with me uh, and execute that at the gateway. Once that entitlement hits the gateway, the gateway creates a micro firewall, and the only thing that exists in that micro firewall is that single rule set that allows the user access to the application. That's what we call the segment of one. And this is where the scalability of the system really is, is uh, based out of. And now, we call it live entitlements. This isn't just a one-time connection. If any of the access criteria change, any of the policies change, we can adjust the network uh, entitlements on the fly. So the living, breathing system where the controller, the client, the gateway work together uh, to make sure that the, the uh, connection is still valid. So once you've implemented this approach, you can deploy gateways across your hybrid environment. You can deploy them in your third-party data center, your internal networks, and even in public cloud. And this is truly cloud-scale, cloud-native. One of the things that you'll see in this picture is that users can connect to multiple sites simultaneously at the same time, which is a completely different approach than a traditional perimeter base where you're either connected to one VPN concentrator or another. This, would allow, this is what allows us to have hyperscale and availability. Um, it's native within public cloud, so it works, and we'll talk about that in a minute, within the AWS security features. It's truly designed to give a centralized security spine for user access across all hybrid environments. This is what it looks like once you've implemented. Each individual user has individual network segments of one only to the applications they need to get their job done every day. They don't get a general VPN connection into a back-end VLAN. Um, so in this case, Sally on Developer Project X, she only has, she has two discrete segments of one to two different applications. Charlie, he has three, one in the internal data center, two in the cloud. And that's how you can build uh, um, networks that are specifically tuned to users, leveraging um, software-defined perimeter and app game. So let's talk about public cloud. Actually, the number one use case we see for this technology is companies wanting to move to public cloud. They want discrete security from every single back-end user into uh, their environments. So we've built a ton of technology around the AWS uh, ecosystem. Um, it's built to run in Amazon natively. It's available in the marketplace. Uh, we have a number of resolvers that work with native security functions within Amazon. It also works with auto scaling. And probably the number one use case we see, because we control the network on a session by session level, AppGate creates logs that allow our customers to meet all their compliance requirements. They can show explicit access from every single user to every instance within the public cloud and use that to meet all their regulatory com uh, compliance requirements. So I have just a little bit of time left. Let's talk a little bit about one of our customers. We have a very large um, financial services regulatory body uh, that's been a long time AppGate client. They've used AppGate to micro-segment their user access for their internal networks for many, many years. A couple years ago, they decided they needed to start moving more towards public cloud, and they made the choice to pick Amazon as their partner. And they wanted to take the same network segmentation approach that they use to meet all their regulatory requirements internally 
and extend that into their Amazon environments. So we've worked with them to do that. Uh, today, they are one of the largest financial customers of Amazon. They spend up tens of thousands of VMs on a daily basis, and they use AppGate to control explicit network access to each of these workloads that are running in the environments. Um, and that allows them to meet all their regulatory compliance requirements. The other thing they've done, which is interesting, is they used to have an internal data center first approach, but as they've adopted more and more Amazon, they've moved their app gate and their SDP control plane and gateways into Amazon, and now they're using their Amazon VPCs as their control point for all their internal networks as well. And that's allowing them to slowly start to refine their their internal networks and redesign them uh, and save them a, a lot of money. So this is an example of a customer who's taking this approach and using it to her advantage to feel more comfortable migrating entire uh, applications into Amazon. So anyway, um, our booth is uh, 2140. I, I have one minute, seven seconds if there a question. And I'll happily you can meet, meet us at the booth. And I'll happily bring you the microphone if anyone would like to ask a question. Anyone? They're really controlling themselves over here. They're they're struggling. I threaten them. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much. Thank you.